The goal of Stoicism and many ancient philosophies is eudaimonia. It's a Greek word loosely translated as happiness and flourishing. It's not feeling good that matters, but being good and not in any sort of trivial sense. Life is about possessing strong character and living in accord with one's values. And we come to our values via reason, experience, nature, and perhaps most importantly, by imitating those we look up to. The contemplation of the sage exercise is all about harnessing that imitative ability in order to get closer to a eudaimonic life. So this exercise, the contemplation of the sage, is a meditation on a role model. The idea is to intentionally select a model and reflect on how to emulate them. So let's talk a little bit about choosing models and then how to meditate or reflect on them. The first step is selecting a sage to contemplate. A sage is the ultimate role model, someone who is perfectly virtuous. They're someone who makes the best decisions, sees reality as it is, and always acts with justice, courage, moderation, and wisdom. Of course, these days it's difficult to find a real sage, but that does not mean we cannot bring one to mind. We can choose a historical character or perhaps an enhanced version of an actual character or perhaps even a fictional one. Often it is better or at least easier, more manageable to focus on a model who is not a sage, someone who is not perfect, but importantly has attributes that we wish to emulate. They will likely be seriously flawed. That's okay, focus on what they do right. The Stoic philosopher Seneca advised his friend Lucilius as follows, choose yourself a Cato, or if Cato seems too severe for you, a Laelius, a man whose character is not quite so strict. Choose someone whose way of life, as well as words, and whose very face is mirroring the character that lies behind it, have won your approval. Be always pointing him out to yourself, either as your guardian or as your model. There is a need, in my view, for someone as a standard against which our characters can measure themselves. Without a ruler to do it against, you won't make crooked straight. Cato was a senator famous for holding to his principles. Laelius was known as Laelius the Wise, an admirable man, but perhaps not as demanding a figure as Cato. Cato famously refused to accept any form of clemency from Julius Caesar, who he saw as a tyrant and opted to commit suicide rather than surrender in any meaningful way to him. Laelius did not sacrifice himself in the same way. He is portrayed as a moderate figure, a wise man who had a strong, deep grasp of philosophy. Contemplating either kind of soul is useful, the demanding sage or the moderate, virtuous person. The second step is moving to contemplate the role model. To fully understand this, you should be sure to check out some of the exercises in our STOA app or indeed many of the videos in the YouTube. You can always return to this video after trying the exercise and perhaps there will be some useful details you'll be able to put into context. In this exercise, we always begin by reminding ourselves what we value about this person, this model, reminding ourselves what virtues they possess. In this way, we are forming the stick against which we measure ourselves, to paraphrase Seneca. Then we move to picturing the model in action. You can imagine them swapping place with you and acting in your place as they go throughout your day. Or you can imagine you acting throughout your life, being observed by the sage. Or perhaps you may even imagine simply the advice that a sage would give to you. All three forms of this exercise clarifies your values, offers motivation, and clarifies how you will act in the day. Crucially, as you imagine the sage acting in your place, do so in a detailed manner. Imagine the physical movements, the visual scene, the sounds from the environment. Visualize what it would feel like in as much detail as possible. Do not bring to mind just abstract ideas or abstract virtues. Imagine thinking them through concretely in a physical and visual sense. Imagine Seneca standing up to Nero. 
imagine Marcus Aurelius granting clemency to his rival. Whoever it is, visualize your heroes acting in a concrete and specific situation and manner. Musicians can practice their skills through visualization. They might, say, take a violinist, might imagine their fingers moving in particular ways. And if you do this in minute enough detail, it can be a form of practice, of mental rehearsal. This is the kind of mental rehearsal you want to be doing as you think about yourself or the sage acting throughout your day. The sort of thing you can actually imitate because it has been visualized in a high enough resolution. Of course, as you picture your day, you'll stumble on difficult questions from time to time. And here, it may be useful to ask, what would the sage do? Sometimes the answer may not be clear. When this happens, don't shy away from the sorts of scenario, but think through it. Perhaps you can even imagine how your role model might think through the issue. As you do this exercise, use realistic heroes as examples. Acting well is possible. Each hero is an existence proof of that. Indeed, you've acted well before and can do so again and again. Many people let peers measure their behavior. Unfortunately, peers are not always chosen for their virtues. By contemplating a sage, we can take advantage of our natural imitative ability and let the virtuous measure our life. So bring to mind how a virtuous person would act in your place, make it a practice with the contemplation of the sage, consider the advice they give you, and experience the drive to act well when they are observing you. And always progress. Please leave any comments or questions you have about this particular exercise and offer any ideas you have for future videos from either myself or Michael. And be sure to subscribe.